Hi all, welcome to the new session. In our previous sessions, we have learned moment of inertia, parallel axis theorem, perpendicular axis theorem. So, I told you in the previous session that we have learned these theorems just to just to calculate the moment of inertia of different shapes or di of bodies having different shapes. In this session, we are just learning how to find the moment of inertia of different shape like rod, disc, x, etc. So, this is the topic. First, we will learn the steps, important steps to calculate the moment of inertia of different bodies having different shapes. Then, we will learn, we will take particular shapes like we will learn the moment of inertia of thin uniform rod, moment of inertia of a rectangular lamina and the moment of inertia of a uniform bar of rectangular cross section. First, we are just discussing the important steps. You need to follow these steps to calculate the moment of inertia of any shapes. So, we need to stick on the steps and we need to apply the formula based on their geometry that is it. The first step is Suppose you want to find out the moment of inertia of a rigid body here, you can see a rod. If you want to find out the moment of inertia of that rod, first you need to do is you just consider a small element of infinitesimal mass about the same axis, then find out the moment of inertia of that small element about the axis. So, this is the first important step. So, you need to identify a small element in the body and then find out the moment of inertia of that small element about the same axis of rotation. So, obtain the expression for the <coughs> moment of inertia of an infinitesimal mass of the given body about the given axis. In this particular example, I am just considering a small element of infinitesimal mass d m which is at a distance of x from the given axis. So, what is the moment of inertia? That infinitesimal small change in the moment of inertia d i equal to it is d m into x square. So, first you need to obtain similar expressions in all the shapes you have you are going to learn. Second step is the expression is then integrated over the limits depending on the shape of the body. So, second you need to do the integration of the above expression. So, integrate the expression because we are just considering a small element and you know the body is made up of a large number of such particles. So, just sum or just take the sum of that particles in the since the body we are just considering a continuous structure we are just using the integration. So, integrate the above expression. So, in the previous case you know the expression is d m x square. So, here we need to integrate the expression between the limits. Here we just took the limit as minus l by 2 to plus l by 2 because we are considering a rod of length capital L. So, at this side it is minus l by 2 and at this side it is plus l by 2. So, take the limit as minus. So, this is for this case and you just change the limit based on the geometry of the body. And the third step is whenever necessary use parallel axis or perpendicular axis theorem. Suppose you know you want to find out the moment of inertia about C D. So, this is a question and if you know the moment of inertia of the body or somehow you calculated the moment of inertia of the body about this axis which passes through the center of mass, then use parallel axis theorem if you want to get the moment of inertia about C D. So, these are the three important steps you need to follow. First one obtain the ex expression of moment of inertia of that small element, then integrate the expression, then use the parallel axis or perpendicular axis theorem whenever necessary. So, with these steps you can find out the moment of inertia of any shapes. Just use these three logics. Okay? So, first <coughs> we are going to find out the moment of inertia of a thin uniform rod. So, this is, our, this is our first example. So, consider a uniform rod of length capital L of length capital L and the mass is capital M. So, the mass is capital M. Here we are just considering another term also linear density which is mass per 
unit length. Here, let rho be the linear density rho and it is given by mass per unit length. So, m is the mass of this rod and the length is capital N. So, m by L will give you the linear density. So, in this case we are considering a rod of length capital L, mass capital M and a linear density rho. So, with this we are just going to find out what is the moment of inertia of this rod about an axis passing through this center of mass. So, this is our task. So, just remember those steps first we need to find out or we need to identify a small element. So, we need to identify a small element of mass d m which is at a distance of x from the axis of rotation. What next? you need to find out the expression for the moment of inertia about that small mass. So, moment of inertia of that small mass, moment of inertia of that small mass which is i dash is given by i dash equal to what product of mass and square of the distance between the axis. So, what is the what is the expression for that mass? For that we introduce the term linear density. So, what is linear density? It is the mass per unit length. So, here we are just considering a small infinitesimal element of length d x. So, we are just considering a small infinitesimal element of length d x. So, that mass of that element will be what? It is rho into d x. It is rho into d x. So, this is very important rho is the linear density mass per unit length. So, just multiply mass per unit length with the distance of that small element. So, rho d x will give you the mass of this small element. So, i dash equal to what is i dash? It is the moment of inertia of that small element about the axis p q and it is given by mass into mass is rho d x into distance square it is x. So, rho d x x square will give you the moment of inertia of the element about the axis p q. So, what is the next step? After obtaining after obtaining that expression we need to integrate right because the body is made up of large such elements. So, we need to integrate the expression between the limits. Here the limit is from minus l by 2 to plus l by 2. So, it is from 0 to l or you can say minus l by 2 to plus l by 2. So, next we are just going to find out the moment of inertia of this road a b about the axis p q. For that we are just writing the expression i which is equal to we need to integrate this expression from minus l by 2 to plus l by 2. So, integrate minus l by 2 to plus l by 2 rho x square d x. Here you can see the integration is same from the value will be the same from minus l by 2 to 0 and from 0 to l by 2. So, it is better you just integrate the expression from 0 to l by 2 and take that twice, twice of that answer. So, it will take the form 2 into integral 0 to l by 2 rho x square d x. It is 2 into integral 0 to l by 2 rho x square d x. Just integrate. So, here, here rho is constant. So, take the rho outside. What is x square d x? x cube by 3 and apply the limits. So, it becomes 2 rho x cube by 3 within limit 0 to l by 2 within limit 0 to l by 2 just, multi, just apply the limit. So, it is l cube by 8 divided by 3. So, it becomes 2 rho l cube by 8 into 3 24 and the lower limit it is 0. So, it becomes 2 rho l cube by 24. So, it is 2 24 cancel out. So, it becomes rho by 12 
and we know what is m m is given by so m is given by rho is given by m by l total mass by length so what is m it is rho into l so just take that rho l com so as, as a group so that it becomes rho into l remaining l square by 12 rho into l into l square by 12 what is rho into l rho l into l is m which is the total mass of the body rho into l is m which is the total mass of the body and the next term is m l square by 2 so this is the moment of inertia of this rod of length capital L mass capital M about the axis which pass through the center of mass. So, this is how we can arrive at the expression. So, we got I equal to m L square by 12. You need to by heart all this formula. So, moment of inertia of the rigid rod about an axis passing through its center and perpendicular to its length is m L square by 12. And the next, we need to find out the moment of inertia of the same rod but about a different axis. I told you the moment of inertia of the body may vary. At first, we learn the moment of inertia of the thin rod about an axis passing through its center and perpendicular to its length. Now, we are just finding out the moment of inertia of the same rod but about an axis passing through one end of the rod and perpendicular to its length. So, it is passing through one end of the rod and perpendicular to its length. So, here <coughs> we are going to find out the moment of inertia of the rod about CD. How can we find out that one? What is the moment of inertia of the rod about CD? So, just use parallaxis theorem because we know the moment of inertia of the rod about this axis passing through center of mass. What is that? ICM. So, ICM as ICM as m l square by 12. We just de derive this expression ICM equal to m l square by 12. So, by parallaxis theorem the moment of inertia of this road about an axis passing through one end and perpendicular to its length equal to ICM it is m l square by 12 plus what next product of total mass and square of the distance between the axis. So, it is m into what is the distance? So, the distance between these two parallel axis is l by 2. So, m into l by 2 the whole square m into l by 2 the whole square. So, it becomes <coughs> m l square by 12 plus m l square by 4 take the LCM 12 and 4. So, it is what you will get m L square by 3 it is m L square by 3 take the LCM as 12 and just rearrange the term. So, you can arrive at the moment of inertia of the same rod about another axis which passes through is one of its ends and parallel to the former one is given as m L square by 3. This is how, this is why we have explained that the moment of inertia of the same body may vary. In the previous case, we obtained the expression as m L square by 2, but here the expression is m L square by 3 based on the new axis. So, if you while learning the thing, you have to take care of the position of the axis also. Do not learn that the moment of inertia of the rod is m l square by 2 or the moment of inertia of the rod is m l square by 3. You have to specify the axis moment of inertia of the rod about an axis passing through its center and perpendicular to its length is m l square by 2. Moment of inertia of the same rod about one of its ends is it is m l square by 3. So, this is all about the moment of inertia of that thin uniform rod. We can consider the next shape it is moment of inertia of a rectangular lamina. So, lamina is nothing but a piece of paper. So, this is an example for lamina. So, here we need to find out the moment of inertia of a thin rectangular lamina 
about an axis perpendicular to its plane and passing through its center of mass. So, you have to find out the moment of inertia of the lamina perpendicular to its plane. So, in this fashion perpendicular to its plane and passing through the center of mass. For that we are just considering a rectangular lamina of mass capital M length small l breadth small b. So, we are just considering a lamina of mass capital M length small l <coughs> and breadth small b. Here we are considering an another term sigma sigma which is the mass per unit area of the lamina. In the previous case we took linear density mass per unit length. Here we are just taking mass per unit area. So, sigma equal to mass by area. So, what is the area of the lamina? L into B. So, sigma equal to M by L B or what is mass? M equal to sigma into L B. Mass equal to sigma into L B. So, finding out the moment of inertia of the lamina about an axis which is perpendicular to its plane, we are just considering two axes y y dash and x x dash intersect at c. Okay. Here we are just considering an axis y y dash which is parallel to the side c b, another axis x x dash which is parallel to the side c d. And we are just considering a small strip, we are just following those steps what we have discussed earlier we need to find out a small strip ok. Here you can see a small strip of thickness d x which is at a distance of x from y y dash ok. We are just considering a small strip of thickness d x which is at a distance of x from y y dash. We are just going to find out the moment of inertia of this small strip about y y dash then we will find out the moment of inertia of the whole lamina about y y dash ok. This is our task. So, first we need to find out the moment of inertia of this small strip about y y dash. What will be the moment of inertia of this small strip about y y dash for that we need to first identify what is the mass of the strip. What is the mass of the strip? It is given by mass of the strip is given by what? We know sigma is the mass per unit area ok. What is the area of the strip? Area of the strip is b into d x. So, this is in the rectangular shape. So, the area of this strip is given by b into d x. So, the mass of the strip is given by b d x which is the area into sigma. So, mass of the strip is given by b d x sigma. So, the moment of inertia of the strip, moment of inertia of the strip equal to about y y dash, moment of inertia of the strip about y y dash equal to what mass into square of the distance, mass into square of the distance. So, mass is m sigma d x into distance is x. So, the square of the distance m sigma d x x square. So, this is the moment of inertia of the strip about y y dash. So, next we are just going to find out the moment of inertia of the whole lamina about y y dash. For that we need to integrate this expression from what minus l by 2 to plus l by 2 or just integrate the expression from 0 to l by 2 and take the twice of the answer. So, we are just going to find out moment of inertia, moment of inertia of the lamina, of the lamina. Let it be i y y dash, moment of inertia of the lamina about y y dash. It is given by, we need to integrate the expression from 0 to L by 2, take that twice. 2 into integral 0 to L by 2 b sigma x square d x b sigma x square d x. So, here you can take 2 b sigma outside 
integral x square dx it is x cube by 2 x cube by 3 and apply the limits. So, it is x cube by 3 from 0 to L by 2 x cube by 3 from 0 to L 0 to L by 2. So, it is equal to 2 B sigma L cube by 8 by 3. So, it is L cube by 24 2 12 will cancel out and also here also we have the mass mass is given as sigma L B. Okay. So, sigma L B we need to we need to that right uh, we need to common those terms it is equal to 2 into 2 into sigma L B which will give you the mass then L square by 24. So, 2 to 24 will cancel out sigma L B will give you the total mass. So, it is given by m into L square by 2. So, the moment of inertia of the lamina about y y dash equal to m into L square by 2. Similarly, you will get the moment of inertia of the same lamina about x x dash which is given by you can follow the similar steps and you can arrive at the expression m b square by 2. So, the expression is m b square by 2. So, it is m L square by 12 for i y y dash and this is for i what x x dash. Now, see these are two axes which are right angles to each other and the first one the moment of inertia of the lamina about the first axis is m L square by 12 and the second one it is m b square by 12. We need the moment of inertia of the lamina about an axis perpendicular to these two and passing through the point of intersection of these two. So, just use the perpendicular axis theorem. So, the, uh, uh, as per perpendicular axis theorem, the moment of inertia of the lamina about an axis perpendicular to is plane. This is what we require i equal to the sum of it is i y y dash plus i x x dash which is nothing but m l square by 12 plus m b square by 12 or it is nothing but m into l square plus b square by 12. So, this is the moment of inertia of the lamina about an axis passing through is passing through the center of mass and perpendicular to its plane. So, it is very important you just learn all these formula very thoroughly it is very important that the axis is very important. So, with this I am just concluding we will see the moment of inertia of other shapes in our next, next session. Thank you bye for now.